Right? But we also can do narcotics searches, which we just got certified on a couple weeks ago for heroin, methamphetamine, and cocaine. During that process for the cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine, we learned how to perform building searches for those substances, vehicle searches, which is the most common thing we do, uh, which stem from traffic stops most often uh, during substance investigations, um, or contacts like in parking lots and things like that for suspicious people. Um, and then interdiction. Uh, sorry, I'm listening to a call that we might have to go to, hopefully. Um, so, back to, back to the training part. For the narcotics detection, one of the fun things that we got to do when we were in training is we uh, were able to work with one of the task force down in Lewis County, and we uh, were able to locate 2. Oh, chill out. 2.65 pounds of heroin uh, which came up from California, and that was pretty fun because that was a whole new thing that we learned, and it was really interesting to see the change of behavior there because it was, you'd think, a big 2.65 pounds of heroin would be easy to find for a dog because it'd be a large odor, but it's really actually very hard to, to notice that change in behavior versus a really small odor is much easier to, to read. So. One of the fun stories we have for the tracking and apprehension part was one of our first, his very first apprehension was a bad guy in Linwood that he caught that ran from the Linwood Police Department that he tracked to and scared off right into the hands of a waiting deputy. And that was his first capture and he didn't even have to lie to him, the guy gave up and got tased. So it was awesome. And he was very proud of himself and I was proud of him too, so that was cool. Um, what we're going to do now is a demonstration on bite work. It's what most people like to see, and it's really fun, and it's one of his favorite parts. My partner Mark here is going to be the be the bad guy. Yeah, so where he bites, one of the questions was, is he trained to go for the arm? That's one of the better places to present because if our dog bites in that upper back shoulder area, it takes the suspect off balance. Obviously, our decoy is prepared to handle that, so he's going to stay on balance. If it's a real bad guy, there's pain there. Oh. It's going to take him off balance right off his feet, which is what we want to gain compliance so we can take the person into custody and cause the least amount of damage to the suspect. The main point of using a dog is to track, apprehend, and do minimal damage while keeping everybody safe, including the officers and the community. So that's why we try to present areas. The dog's going to go for the first thing available. If only his legs were sticking out, then he would take a leg. If only his chest was available, he'd take his chest. We never train areas like the face or something like that. That's not that's not ideal. We would train that. Um, but legs, arms, whatever's the thing that's available is what he's going to take. Ah.
So another another part that's obvious but very successful for us and for any canine team is the psychological deterrent, which is you know the barking and just the mere presence of a police dog, just like the mere presence of police deters crime. Well, the mere presence of a police dog deters suspects from fighting and running. And that has also proven successful with us as a team when we had a robbery suspect that we confronted um, during an operation that could have fled but 